You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. And I said using the Claire as a dildo wasn't the best idea. Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week I'm joined by the man who does a great impression of a sub switch. It's Mist. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Mm. Uh, a sub switch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remind me not to tell you anything <laughs> ever again. Yeah, you will. Um, what do you have for us this week, Mist? Well, this week I'm talking about how much it actually costs to dress up for Drag Race. And then we have our game in Game of the Week. And that's before we do something interesting in Crafty Queens. On the screen now you can see our social media. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as people who popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. How proficient are you at the use of Google? R Google? Google. Google. Sorry, I've got um, class <laughs> you still out? Yeah. <laughs> swallow, darling. Swallow. Do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> especially when there's a creamy, creamy filling involved. Um, no, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at Google, but that's because Google's used to me Googling. Okay. Mm. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. They've released some words that you should never, ever Google. There are sacrosanct words. No, sac not sacrosanct. It's just they said, trust me, you do not want to Google these words. Well, I know, I know a couple from the old days, such as blue waffle. You do not Google blue waffle. Oh, you can Google blue waffle. No, don't Google blue waffle. No, because because it's gone that far in now. It will actually just show you pictures of blue waffles. Oh, good. <laughs> That's okay. a relief. Yeah. Um, but no, Google images and things, things not to, not to Google. Mm. Um, so I thought I'd share them with you. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't try this at home, kids. Well, definitely not the first one. Degloving. Degloving? Degloving. Is that not literally removing... Removing a glove. Like, but the skin? Uh-huh. So it's actually a medical term of when you remove the skin and layers of muscle tissue and fat in a single move. Oh, oh. I, I recognise that. It is horrible from... Mm -hmm. TV shows like Hannibal, you know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah gross, but mm, fun. Mm. Mm. OK, yeah, no, I don't want to know any more about that. No, I will no not. More about degloving. No, I won't be Googling degloving. OK. Um, Actually, that's made me quite queasy, to be yeah. honest. Fournier. Fournier? It's F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R. -E that sounds like a, a hair product. It does, doesn't it? Um, it's a ne acute ne necrotic infection. And it's just your flesh literally falling off as it rots. Ooh. Oh, God, I'm feeling quite queasy, and I've not even had an eclair. Do you want an eclair now? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll save an eclair for later. OK. I, I, for some reason, I'm, I'm, off, I'm put off my food. You've been put off your food? Yeah. OK. Mm. Would you like to know some more words? Oh, go on. <laughs> OK. Um, the other one not to do is crocodil. With a K, not a crocodile. A crocodile? A crocodile. Is that a dildo in the shape of a crocodile? No. Um, it's a flesh-eating zombie drug. So what happens is that as you, as you overly use a, a point in your arm to inject mm -hmm. drugs, right, and necrosis sets in, mm -hmm. right, and it sends you a little bit loopy as well, the necrosis, because you basically mm -hmm. get poisoned from the inside. Mm -hmm. and that's called crocodiling. <laughs> Have you considered therapy? Don't Google these words. I'm, provo <laughs> I'm providing a public service. You are. <laughs> Don't Google these words. You, you enjoyed it a bit too much when you Googled it yourself, didn't you? I, I just Googled men with big dicks, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. You have a tattoo. I do have a tattoo. What is that? I have several tattoos. Uh, that is a tree of life. That is a pentacle. And that's a seed of life with a... I thought that was the, the Death Star. It's it's not the Death Star, no. I it was the Death Star. I am a big Star Wars fan, but no. These are all hippy-dippy stuff. You should see the ones on my back. Ooh. Anyway, this is a story about um, Natalie Rene, who's 35, mm -hmm. who decided that she would get herself a, a DIY tattoo kit from Amazon. It's only £50. Pounds. I, I, can, I, can, I can tell where this is going to go wrong she wanted, already. She wanted a, an arrow going through a heart. OK. Doesn't look like an arrow going through a heart, though. Oh, that's awful! <laughs> oh, that's so... Oh! <laughs> that... <laughs> it's a bit penisy. 
that even yeah, it even looks like a bad drawing of a of a mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so her fifty pound tattoo kit. Um, one thousand three hundred and fifty pounds to remove it. Wow! Couldn't she just get it covered? It's How big is it? It's actually in the crook of her arm there. She could get another tattoo over that for less. <sighs> but what would you have there? That's well, I'd rather have a picture of a cock and balls than that. Already got one. <laughs> it's, not, it's the balls. I I, I can I, understand I like what's supposed to be the anatomy of it. I like the fact that it's got the balls and potentially a penis with hair on it. Well, mm, I think that's somebody with a pointy willy. And I have met guys with willies that pointy, yeah. balls, and the perineum. Smelly bridge. Yes. You just, like, have a couple of buttocks and thighs going out there. All you need is a little... <laughs> oh, it's a the bottom view. Yeah. Oh, OK, I get that now. Yeah. But that would require some additional work. Yes. Which a proper tattoo artist should do, not a mad woman who buys things off of Amazon thinking that she might get the artistic skill as a bonus with the items to do the tattoo. I mean, her friend did it for her. After some wine. After some... Wine. Wine. OK. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, if you want me to do a tattoo on you, <laughs> run. Um, but you can always drop us a message on at the Good TV on social media. <laughs> and that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Oh, God, how are you going to top that? I wouldn't. Um... <laughs> 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 the bottom joke, you see what they do? <laughs> um, when you're in the shower having your ablutions, when you're mm -hmm. abluting, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. do you ever pee? I do worse things than pee. Never poop in the shower. Some people have to prepare for a night in with a nice gentleman. You know, poop in the shower, though, surely. Poop in the toilet. There's consequences. Yeah. You know, it's not a proper poop. Oh, it's, OK. It's a... Oh, I, I sit on the toilet, I have a but book. I would consider oh, that the... Out of me. That would be worse than, oh, okay. you know, a bit of wee. And it's all going in the same hole anyway. It doesn't go in different holes. Not in my house. It's all connected up. Yeah, no, yours is different, so anyway. Um, Somebody doesn't understand the rudimentaries of plumbing. Water goes in, water goes out. Hmm. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> um, so, this is, a story. <laughs> this is a story about a doctor who has released a, a statement saying you shouldn't pee in the shower because doing so will have serious medical implications. Uh -huh. yeah. um, he said that because what will happen is, as you pee in the shower, your brain will associate the sound of running water with peeing, right? And it will make you desensitise... It will make you more sensitive to rain and things, and so it will make you want to pee more when you hit To water. be fair, do you ever have that thing where you're coming out from... Uh, going home from a late night, and for somehow your brain knows when you're approaching the door... The sudden need to pee. The sudden need to pee when you're approaching the door. So I believe that, because for some reason... I don't know why, but my bladder is aware of my proximity to the loo. So it used to happen to me when I lived in the flat, and it used to be when I got to the lift. Mm-hmm. My body go, you need to pee now. So it's you in those high-story flats peeing all in the lift? No, 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 I used to, I used to pee out the front door. Out the front door? Yeah, yeah so in the block of flats, I used to go, <laughs> I need to pee, press the button for the lift, go to the front door and pee out the in the street. Oh, I thought you meant out your flat's front door, no. just in the corridor where everybody else is going. Oh, no, it, was, it was a bougie flat, it was a courtyard, so it was technically outside my front door. Still, nobody wants to live in a block of flats that smells vaguely of pee, though, to be honest, I think all blocks of flats, flats may smell vaguely of pee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a couple of times I did that, I went, oh no, because it was a slow lift. <laughs> so, um, But it's true, your brain somehow talks to your bladder and it knows. Which is why it's fine, because now I have a downstairs loo next to the front door. In the block of flats. <laughs> they installed it just for him. <laughs> in the commode. A com <laughs> <laughs> they haven't installed it for you at all. It's just one of those Amazon parcel bots that you just keep shitting in. <laughs> no, don't need to poo. <laughs> Coming from a night out, you need to pee, not poo. <laughs> oh, poo. But yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Um, it's not going to stop me though. Well, it won't stop you shitting in the shower, is it? <laughs> it's how you water flow. Oh no, I've just shot myself. <laughs> 
Yeah, never go out in the rain. Yeah. It's a problem living in Manchester, really. Exactly. <laughs> that song, um, MacArthur's Park. Yeah. Yeah, well, talk about taking your cake out in the rain. Yeah. Someone got his... Anyway, um, that's all for the buzz this week. Uh, thanks for that, Mike. Well, I'll better reevaluate my life choices when doing my ablutions then. Just keep evaluating the life choices. Uh, pleasure as always, but coming up after this short break, Miss brings us a look at the celebrity news in showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Mist. <laughs> So, celebrations. Yay. Dear Coffee won Drag okay. Race. Oh, no, okay. The drag artist, Dear Coffee. Yes, yeah. Drag Race, Dear Coffee. Yes, who I'm a lovely fan of, and a lovely fan? A big lovely. fan of. Yes, I think she's amazing. Little bit sexually attracted to Dear Coffee. Really? Mm. Oh. Oh, well. Well, um, this is not the news I'm going for, but she's officially off the market. She's 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 been on Instagram and showing off the new boyfriend. Nice. So very very happy and congratulating. But no, we can't have her. No, she's taken. I don't know. She might have an open relationship. I don't know. It'll stop me normally. But the the big news is she's she's she she's won um, UK versus the world. Yes. And we're very very happy for her and all cheers all around. Like, look at her. She's, isn't she a star? She's yes. brilliant. I, I, I didn't watch any of this series whatsoever. Not at all. She's at all. stonking. Absolutely stonking. I, I, I think Dear Coffee's a brilliant performer, right? And love their songs, love their, the things mm -hmm. that they do on, on TV and stuff. I think about, I just ugh, boarded RuPaul. Anyway, Dear Coffee won. Mm -hmm. um, so she's the second to win it. Second series, Blue Hydrangea won last year. And she beat off... Um, <laughs> <laughs> She did. She beat them off. That's why we're winning, I suppose. Mm. But <laughs> they're distracted, at least. <laughs> Can I win yet? Drag Race down run unders Hannah Conda was competing, and Drag Race France's La Grande Dame, mm -hmm. who they had a bit of a, a bit of a thing with, but that's that's not the new boyfriend. Famously, for series and all the other UK series, they don't get a cash prize, do they? No. This year they did. Oh, yeah. £50,000. Nice. And that's going to come in handy. Tear Coffee was talking about it. Do you know how much they spent on costumes to prepare for Drag Race? I know it's a lot of money. Yeah. But I also remember Tear Coffee's first incarnation on Drag Race, where not much money was spent at all. Well, there were a lot of like design challenges on the show so it's not like they could pay for a design they had to make it there and then right you know, but there were some that were just a bit yeah yeah there were misses from tia the first first time they're on but yeah I, I i don't know is where i'm going to go with that one basically designers because there are big designers that want to get on there and show off what they've got but you've still got to make some money mm -hmm. so the minimum you're looking at for per um, thing, according to Tia, is about 2500 for each look. Okay, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money when you add it up. So that £50,000 she's won is probably just going to cover what it cost her to go in. Right. Um, do you know who the highest spend is in terms of, as far as we're aware, of uh, uh, contestants on Drag Race? RuPaul. Well, RuPaul obviously has a, a lot going on there, but contestants. Contestants. Um, both UK and US or just UK? Um, all, the, all, the, all the series. But all the series. Um, I'll narrow it down for you. It's a US queen. It's gonna, I, I'm going to say it's one of the more recent US queens. Mm -hmm. Bianca Del Rio. Bianca Del Rio can sew her own stuff, and it's always the same damn look, and just in a different cut. Yeah. No, this one surprised me as well because I, sorry Heidi, um, but I think she had a very similar experience with Tia, where some of those looks were a little bit dodgy. No, Heidi and Closet, uh, Heidi and Closet. Sorry, pronounce that properly. She spent four thousand dollars, so that's about three thousand two hundred something in in. British money um, on her Drag Race appearance on season twelve in twenty twenty, but 
when she went on All Stars 8, she forked out £32,000. Over £32,000. That's a huge investment to get on TV. Yeah, that's just... She can come on here for a pound. Well, whatever she wants. (laughs) Put off in the bin bag if she wants. (laughs) We'll give her an eclair. No, when my eclairs, you can back off. (laughs) There's a line. It has been drawn. Moving on. So, Netflix, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is. We've got another show coming. This one's called Baby Reindeer. Oh, I know. It's a a cute title, isn't it? Um, But actually, it's a chilling story. It's a chilling story of the Scottish comedian Richard Gadd being harassed by a middle-aged woman he meets in a pub. Okay. Um, Now, this actress is not playing that middle-aged woman. Okay. She's playing the American therapist that he has a bit of a relationship with, as far as I'm aware. Um, And she is a trans actress named Nava Nava Mao, and she plays the American therapist Terry. Um, Now, she said of the script... When I was reading the script, it felt like the first time reading a character written by someone who actually had known and loved a trans woman. It felt like an honour to even get to read the script because of Richard's vulnerability. There's a light that I think pulsates out of that kind vulnerability and all the characters in the story are cast in that light. I felt that in the very first read. Oh, that's good. So that's quite high praise from an actor, really. And... Apparently, it's based on Gad's real life. Okay. So, what they had to go through, um, because basically it's the story of a stalker. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, that's to be looked forward to. I believe it's actually already on Netflix now, so give it a watch. I definitely definitely maybe shall. (laughs) It's a cute title, but, yeah, Yeah. horrible story. (laughs) On to our third story... Now, this one's the one that's really got me excited because I'm a massive nerd. Okay. Disney Plus, they're doing X-Men 97. Okay. Now, if you don't know, um, of X-Men are a huge franchise and part of the Marvel Universe, mm-hmm. but people of a certain age may have spent a lot of time watching the X-Men cartoon on mm-hmm. Saturday morning TV. I did. This is a direct continuation of that cartoon. Nice. Yeah, it just it picks up exactly where the other one left off. Yeah, Gam- Gambit's even hotter in this. I've seen stills of him where he's wearing like a proper old school like crop top. Nice. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty cute. Um, so I've been really I've not started watching it yet. It's available, but do you remember the theme tune? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. It's it's very of its time. Yeah, and and it, as I said, direct continuation. Um, but apparently, mm-hmm. and again, I haven't actually watched it yet myself, but it's punching pretty hard. I mean, X-Men always in its concept is about the other, the mm. outside group. So gay people have uh, felt akin to this and black people and people of faith, anybody who's felt oppressed as their group have always kind of vibed with the X-Men because it's it's a parallel for, for that experience and being oppressed and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it's really got layers to it anyway. But apparently in this new series is, is really punching hard. Um, so the showrunner, Bo DeMeo, he's actually taken... For episode five, I think it is experience. Um, experience from the Pulse nightclub. Okay. Yeah. So you remember back in 2016, there was the shooting in the mm-hmm. Pulse nightclub. Well, he used to be somebody who would frequent that venue. Right. Okay. Yeah. He said episode five was the centerpiece of my pitch to Marvel in November 2020. The idea that having the X Men mirror the journey that any of us who grew up in the original show have experienced being kids in the 90s. He also went on to say, if events like 9-11, Tulsa, Charlottesville or Pulse nightclub teach us anything, it's that too many stories are often cut far too short. He partied at Pulse. It was his club. He has so many great memories of it being an awesome, of the awesome White Lounge. It was like Genosia, which is a country in, in that um, series. A safe space for me and everyone like me to dance and laugh and be free. 
I thought about it a lot when crafting the season and this episode and how the gay community in Orlando rose to heal from that event. Cool. That's... And I've, uh, from friends that watch, watch the show, because um, I said I'm saving it up really so mm -hmm. I can really get into it, this is there's lots of layers and, and lots of real grit to it. So I, I'm glad they're taking it seriously and, and really thought about it. I can't wait to watch it. Now, I'm a little bit excited because they've changed the groinal areas. The groinal areas? Is so, it, it's the first thing you go to look to, isn't it? Look at the size of this of the V there that, that indicates a, a genitalia area, mm -hmm. right? Compared to all the other ones that are quite smooth. Gambit's packing, man. Do you remember there was that trend for making sure you had the thigh gap? And some people would put, like, old CD cases. I'm, I'm practically doing it now myself. Yeah, oh, man's spreading there. <laughs> but yeah, Seriously, he's, he's we're probably just every day that smell o vision hasn't been invented. So rude. It's very musty. But yes, I'm excited. I can tell the, the smell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the show, Biz. Thankfully, he's put the um, iPad there to cover up there. Anyway, thanks for that, Mist. Stick around because coming up next, we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we're going to play a game which is Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this is for our very own, I'm not going to say it, Mist. Off you pop. See you in a bit. Doopy doopy doo -doo -doo -doo. Game of the Week. So Mist has got the Lazy Susan. It's going to give it a spin and ask me a question therein. That's a rhyme. Look at you being all fancy and artistic, doing poetry on the fly. I know. Are you ready for a quiz? I am. Spin it. Right, OK. Whoop. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Where would it stop? Nobody knows. I spun, I, I, spun, I spun it a bit too hard, didn't I? Yeah, it, it, it's oh, very it's well balanced. Going round and season. round. It reminds me of a, a, a certain a certain piece of apparatus in a bathhouse, I know. Um, oh, general knowledge. That's going very quick for a bathhouse piece of apparatus. <laughs> right, OK. Well, you know, I did get uh, motion sickness. Ah. Um, OK, motion so... Sickness. Ooh! No, that's too easy. That is too easy. Um... You don't get to pick, you just ask the question. Who was the Prime Minister when Queen Elizabeth II acceded to the throne? It was all done in the uh, crown. Yeah, but four seasons ago. It was four seasons ago, but it was a very predominant prominent character. The king. No, the prime minister. Who was the prime minister? What's the name of that person? Oh, you got your proper thinking face on, haven't you? Bob. No, it wasn't Bob. Winston Churchill. Oh, was he in it? Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh, okay. okay. That was obviously too, too complicated. Oh god, I've done. It's too quick again. Slow, slow. Ah, shush, shush, shush. Stop. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Stop it on movies. This is this this is more my my end of the market. This is what I like. Sit pop. Oh, name the film these characters appear in. Tony Montana. Ellie Woods, Clary Starling. Oh no, they're different movies. <laughs> I was thinking that it's. <laughs> Let me do that again. <laughs> I thought they were all in the same movie. I'm so sorry. Okay. Name the film these characters appear in. You've got six here, different movies. Okay. All right. First movie. Tony Montana. Hannah Montana the movie. Nope. Bit more bit more serious. Bit more gravitas. Taxi. Good guess. In the you're you're closer. You're closer with taxi. The Muppet's Christmas Carol. You've you've gone the other way. I'll give you the answer. It's Scarface. Oh, I never watched it. Oh, okay. 
Um, to be honest, if I was going to answer that, I would have gone with um, Saturday Night Fever. But um, okay, yeah, okay. Um, Ellie Woods. Is it Ellie Woods or is it L Woods? L Woods. Yeah. Okay. Been a while since I've Brandon seen it. And and stuff. <laughs> You've got it. Legally blonde. Yes. Legally blonde and legally blonde too. Mm-hmm. So Clarice Starling. One flew over a cuckoo's nest. Mm-mm. Still in the set in an asylum, so yeah. But prison. Bit more. Silence of the Lambs is set in a prison. Silence of the Lambs is set in many places, but um, it's an asylum prison thing. It's a prison. They, they've got psychiatrists. Yeah, you can get a psychiatrist. You don't go to prison and not be a psychiatrist. They're not mutually exclusive areas. He's in prison for killing people. Yes, but he's been put into a, a, a thingy. A room because he kills people. Okay. Like the opening line, the, oh, stay away from him because he had a janitor or something last week. <laughs> we'll skip that one. It's far too easy. Uh, sure. <sighs> what film is Captain Hook in? Lots. Exactly. Um, how about Oda Mae Brown? Okay, let's try another one. Let's try something for you. Oh, I've not whacked it that. It's it's very smoothly. Have you put the WD forty on this? No, it's just a bit of lube. Bit of lube. Okay, it's I don't. Not sport. Not sport. We hate sport. Not sport. General. Oh, general knowledge. Okay. The silicone based lube as well. Right. Because it it, it lasts longer. Water base can get a bit sticky. Um. Ooh, what did Forest Mars event invent in 1933? The Mars bar. The Mars bar, you say? Yeah. The answer would be the Mars bar. Don't f*** out with chocolate, mate. <laughs> we can tell what your priorities are by the answers you get right. I, I was once asked to leave Cadbury World. In Birmingham. What were you was, doing? Out. They, they said, "Would you like to try these samples of what chocolate is?" And I did, and I just refused to move. And they kept bringing out trays of chocolate, and I'm going, and they're going, "It's one per person." It's like, don't say that anywhere. Unfortunately, we've landed on sport. That's okay. <sighs> mm, mm. Why do we even have a sport category? Ugh. Okay. Complete the boxer's name. I wouldn't even have a clue. Um, Mike Body Snatcher. Tyson. No. Mike Tyson's a person? He is, He's and he is a boxer, but not that boxer. Mike. The Body, body Snatcher. Thatcher. No, McCallum. Well, that was gonna be a I'm not even going to do the other ones because I wouldn't have a clue, and I don't think you will either. This will make for a very boring game. So, it's landed on sports again. No, no, movies, movies, no. Music, music, we can do music. We can do music. Music will be good. Okay. It makes no. people come together, according to Madonna. It does. Well, it's only... Bourgeois if... and the Revel. I, um, in, in the house I used to live in, in London, which big shared house, uh, they always knew not to knock on my door when Porter's Head was playing. Um, because music does make the people come together. Um, mm, ooh, which song did Chris de Burr sing about his wife? Chris de Burr? Yeah. Big favourite of weddings during the 80s. Chris? Yes. De Burr? De Burr. De Burr or the Burr? De Burr. De Burr. De Burr. Chris de Burr. Mm hmm. Not Chris de Burr. Either or. What have you fancy, really? Um, I know this because it is now a theme tune to a show. Ooh. Um, which stars the amazing, brilliant Philomena Crunk. Oh! Okay. Whose also name is Diane something. Yes. The name has escaped me. And she does a really good sitcom called Mandy. She does, which is the name of the song, Mandy. No. Christopher Mandy. No. That would be the wrong singer and the wrong song. No, it's the right song, it's the wrong singer. It's the wrong 
it, it's both wrong. You, you just, no, no. You've, Manly you've just is the name wrong. of the song no, it's I, not. that I'm referring to on the show. The, that's it's the, the right song, song that you're referring it's, to, but it's not the answer to the question on the a, card. That's a completely separate problem. I think you'll find that's a you problem. I recently bereft. <laughs> the answer is, if anybody ever did go to any of those weddings uh, where it was always the main song, Lady in Red. That's a song about a prostitute. <laughs> Why is that at weddings? Apparently it's about his wife. It, it, so, unless you're trying to cast aspersions on Mrs. De Burr. That she, she may have been a sex worker in the past. She may have been. That's no maybe ha, that. maybe uh, Pretty I Woman, watch. which is a whole other song and a whole other movie, is actually based on Christopher's life. We will never know. Well, I suppose we could, you know, do a bit of news. So, is, is he hairy? Christopher? Yeah. Well, it's a bird, isn't he? Uh, not spot, not spot. Movies. Movie. No, not movie. More, more music. More, 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 more music. Somebody can remix that into something funky and make a whole new dance hit. They could, but they won't. No, they won't. Complete the band or singer's name. Oh, okay. I'll, I, oh, okay. So, first one, I'll give you six here. Talking. Vaginas. No, talking heads. Simon and. The Chipmunks. Oh, that's that's not bad, but it's not what I'm thinking of. Bit more famous. More famous than Al Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think so. They sung the sound of silence. You are just an uncultured yob, really, aren't you? It's Simon and Garfunkel. You referred to me as a yob. Yes, I did. <laughs> Let's call the 1980s and get the word back. So, uh, how about this one? Steely. Magnolias. No, that wasn't a band, that was a film. Wrong category, darling. Steely Dan. Okay, how about Alice in... Wonderland. Again, that's a film, not, not me. You, you're on the wrong category. Well. It's Alice in Chains. I knew a girl called Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. That that that's that would be a good drag name if you lived in the nineties. Um, um, Rage against the patriarchy. Last one. Mm -hmm. a, another favourite band of mine. I'm gl I'm glad it's going into rock now. Limp. Biscuit. Yay! I knew you had some level of taste. Um, yeah. So stick around because coming up next we have Crafty Queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud, and thankfully it is not me this week. It's Mike with the Crafty Queens. Yeah. Yes, the reason why you're not allowed to do Crafty Queens is after the court injunction we had served to us. Um, so, what people don't realise is that we have a visitor in the building today. Ooh! We have Salford's Lord Mayor. Oh, that's very fancy. Very fancy, very wandering around. Fancy, we, fancy, have, fancy. Have we got to dress up and, and pretend to be professional? Well, this is why I thought what we could do is we could make things look a little bit nicer in the bathroom. We could do some towel folding. So when he uses the little room, mm -hmm. right, and he goes to wash his hands, he's got a water closet. Something pretty okay. to wipe his hands on. We're trying to make the um, the toilets in the studio look a bit more sophisticated. Yes. We're not going to sort out the plumbing or the smell. We're going to make <laughs> Nice. Okay. Oh, this is going to stick out like a sore thumb, isn't it? Mm. Okay. Yes. So, um, we've got two towels here. Yes. Okay. So, now, this is to help them wash their hands. This is for drying their hands after washing. Okay. Um, so, we're going to make some beautiful swans. Oh, like the pretty things they do for you in high-class hotels. Exactly, yes. Oh, Almost okay. Hotels don't do it now because it's just pointless. Um, so, just take one of your, your, your um, towels. Okay. okay. And unfurl it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And once you've done that, you want to you want to make it into a, a triangle. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So we're proper unfurling the holes. Unf- or unfurling. Okay. Okay. Are now, we doing it? It's it's quite rectangular. Are we doing lengthways? So or? I've got you a one with square pattern on to make life easier for you. Yes. Okay. Um, now what you want to do is you want to have it so you've got a square gap at the top. Okay. So you've got. You don't want it as a point. You're not making paper airplane. You want a, a bit of a, a flat point. A, a chode. A flat point like that. It looks like the back of a shirt. It does look a little bit like the back of a shirt, yes. Okay. And now what you want to do is is this long edge, okay, mm-hmm. you want to roll it in towards itself. Oh, at an angle, okay. Okay. Getting bigger at the other end so that it comes together thusly. Okay. How far do you go? Uh, well, you need to get them both doing it at the same sort of angle. Okay. Okay, and I want you to that you want to get them to go in together. Oh, okay. So they kind of meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. So you've got two, two. two oh, so it kind of pivots at the top. Two cony things. Yes. Okay, I'm with you. Okay. Cool. So just like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know how they call him a Lord Mayor? Yeah. Do you think he's the overlord of all horses or just female ones? You're a right mayor as opposed to a lord mayor. Could be called worse. Now what we need to do is we now have to make this into an actual birdie kind of shape. Okay. So you lay your hands on the back. On, on, the, on the girthy bit. On the girthy bit. I love laying my hands on a girthy bit. Okay. And then pull it up so it is erect. Okay. I can, I can make the girthy bit erect. <laughs> First time. Okay. And then you kind of want to, to, to push it down and in. Push it so grab it by... So you kind of make it into a, a Z shape. Okay, so give it that kind of... Mm, and tuck it down. Okay. This this is more what happens with... with <laughs> That's an image. Oh, so just like that, then? Well, but you want it to be flat. But flat, okay. But flat. So this is more like a, a, a girthy gentleman when he's stuck in, in very tight pants. It keeps it keeps popping up. Yeah, so you need to you need to keep pushing it down. So like I have managed to do that. You see. Okay. So you need to give it pressure. You need to not just pat it. You need to push it down, force it down. No, not punch it. Just pre- you're using your hand as an iron. And well, you probably don't. If I'm a bit too firm, fir- if, I mean, if I'm too firm, then that's why it keeps popping up. Yeah. Um. So and then, so it should look a little bit like that. Oh, I'm with you. Okay, you got me. Cool. Now that's just that. That's the body of the swan. Okay. Okay. We now need to make the plumage or tail or arse of the swan. Ooh. Okay. And the way you're going to do it is you take a second towel. Okay. okay. Unfurling that. Unfurl that. Right. Okay. And now you want to gather it in small in small folds that get bigger as you go further down. Like a concertina? Right. Like a concertina, but getting big. So you're going to do it like a child did it, so it's not going to look right. Okay. okay so you're going to do a small pinch, mm-hmm. and then a slightly bigger pinch. Okay. And then a slightly bigger pinch again. Okay. okay and get the pinches bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Until you get to the full length. Until you get to the full length, yeah. Well, width, technically. Right. Oh, good. It's quite difficult, this being artistic lark, isn't it? It is. Okay, kind of concertined it. Let me see. Okay, no, so that's a dicky bow. It does look like a dicky bow, that's yeah. That's wrong. Oh, okay. You want to pinch in the middle like I've been doing. But you said to get wider. As it goes down, yes, so you go tiny pinches. Tiny pinches. Tiny pinches, and then a bigger pinch. Yeah. Oh. And then a I thought you pinch. meant lengthwise, not 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 the size of the pinch. No, okay, the pinch I'll start bigger. again. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Mike, why does crafty queens take so long? Well, because we'll be I'm listen. finickety and I want to do a good job. Because I take this seriously. <laughs> okay. 
second time we've lied today. Um, so you get it like that. So it's yeah, it's not a really big passage. picture though. It's still quite dicky bowy, but it should. But it's just because you're using both hands. If you look at me, one hand, one pinch. Yeah, well, I need two hands. You don't need two hands. Just one pinch. You've not seen me naked, mate. I've seen it. It's on Channel 4. All four. <laughs> yeah, anybody that not watched Puppetry of the Penis on all four, have a look. It's not available. It's on, it's on all four. It's not on. Anyway, um, once you, you've got your dicky bow. Yes. Okay. You're going to push it together so it's more like a fan. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. And then that goes beneath the neck of your bird. Okay. Like that. <sighs> <sighs> okay. And that's it. Now you've made a beautiful. Oh, I've made a beautiful swan. No, no, no. No, you see, you, you, right, so. You've got the bum of the bird. I've got the bum of the bird. Right, you put the towel, the foldy towel in the bum. In the bum? Underneath the neck. I've made a beautiful swan. Mist has made a cock. <laughs> and if like mist, you can't get any peen, any vagine or anything in between, even if it's a towel, you can always be a crafty queen. Um, so yeah, I've made a, a lovely swan. You're just fingering a towel. Basically, yeah. I, 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 What's I, this supposed to be? It, well, that was me concert. It, it didn't. It didn't work out very well. I'm not. I'm not very good at at this. Folding a f***ing towel. It is just folding a towel. Yeah. No, it's folding a f***ing towel. <laughs> it's not just folding. Oh, is that why it was so stiff? Yeah. Have you got you... oh, starch, dear? What do you think I wipe up afterwards with? Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. is that you or the other fella? Oh no, mine's not got that pleasant aroma. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm so... sorry. The the mayor is is not going to be impressed by my skills. Even if you sorry. just didn't, if you just did them all the same size, it still would have looked better. That's still a dicky bow. It's not that f***ing thing, though, was it? Well, I've got big hands, and you know what they say about people with big hands? You need to buy big gloves. Never invite them to a fisting party. Ooh, depends on what you want, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's off. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, you, you, you've done a beautiful job, and uh, I think you should just always do Crafty Queens from now on, because yeah. you've obviously got the talent and the skill. It's not that I have the talent and the skill, it's just some people don't. Anyway, that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <sighs> give up. Actually give up. Yeah, it can't be simpler than folding. I Look, I'm not going to put the effort in, because the last time you smashed my egg. That it as well. <laughs> 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 <laughs>